Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are back in ProPresenter, finishing out talking about audience screens. So in the first video, we did kind of an overview of some of the differences in ProPresenter 7 than what was in 6. And I talked about some of the things that I liked and how I was starting to use them. And last time we dove into our templates and setting up our templates for what we wanted our different screens to look like. So I have one set up for my main screens that's going out to our TVs up front, those 70 inch TVs that I've talked about. And I also have another template that is sending out to my live stream output so I have my lower thirds and I've got those multiple templates set up so that things look how I need them to look and go to the right places. Well now I'm gonna show you how to set those up to go to the right places by diving into our audience screen setups. So let's go ahead and dive into the computer and we're gonna set up how to do that in ProPresenter 7. So when we get in here, we're gonna click on screens and we're gonna configure our screens. And it pops up with this window. You can see the three screens that I have set up right here. We have our main output that is normally set up to go to our decimator that sends up to our TVs. I have my live stream output that goes to Broadcom is what the Sling Studio is called. And then I have my third one that's set up to go to a various TV that's for my stage display. So this is the window where you set up where the screens are gonna go. And let me show you how to do that. The first thing, if you're wanting to do a new audience look, the first thing that we're gonna do is click on this plus sign up here. And it brings up this window. Now, this window is selecting what screen you're wanting to go to. Now, obviously, I don't have all of my stuff right now. I'm working at home, so I don't have all my screens. You just see my normal LG setup here. So if you're setting this up at home, what you can do is just go and use a placeholder. Now, if you're setting up an NDI, which is a network output, you can go ahead and set that up here and select your correct resolution for your NDI. But I'm just gonna select a placeholder and then I'm gonna go select what resolution that placeholder will end up being. I'm just gonna use a normal 1080 setup. So I'm gonna select 1920 by 1080. And if I right click on the screen, on that screen name, I'll just rename it. So we'll just do test one. So now that placeholder is set up. And once you get to your actual screen connected, all you need to come in here and do and this is what I do every Sunday as I have to set this up every week. I come in, I'll click on my main output and I'll select my outputs that now pop up in this window up top and the ones that I need them and where I need them to go. Same thing with my test one. I could come in here, click that same output and go select the correct one. But now, so now that screen would be ready to go and will output out of your slot to the correct places that you need it to be for whatever is connected to the computer. Now you also have another option as well when you come to this output target. Now, right now I have this test that we just made set up to go to the entire 1080 screen, but you have options. I could change this to a two to one and it would split this in half. So now I would only be using half of the screen and I could select the alignment and have the other half going to look somewhere else. This is really useful if you have like a dual head to go or a triple head to go, something like that, that has dual outputs on that, where I send one cable out of my computer, sorry, band-aids coming loose. I could send one cable out of the computer into the dual head to go, and then two display cables come out of the dual head to go and send to separate locations. So let me show you how that could look. We're gonna change this placeholder size and we're gonna do a custom size instead and we're gonna do, let's call this dual head, 3840, which is 1920 times two, by 1080. So that's a double wide full HD setup there, and we're gonna click OK. And now let's put our dual head test in there. And you see, because I had it set to two to one, that I can now change it back and forth between which side it's going out. If I go back to full, you see it's getting this full width of that double wide full HD setup. So the way that's useful, I'm gonna set like this to be that two to one again. And then let's go create another screen and we're gonna select our dual head test right here. And now we've already got our dual head test selected. I'm gonna change this to two to one and I'm gonna select the opposite side. And I have two screens set up to go to the tool head to go. So then I can select whatever I want to to go to these places and 
the dual head now has those split output cables and you can send them to wherever you need to. One other thing that you need to pay attention to in this screen, my lower thirds that go out to my Sling Studio, I put that bright neon green behind and then Sling, uh, I can set that to, uh, to key that green out. To do that, I'm gonna select test two. Let's say I want that to be my lower third ones. I'm gonna turn on my screen color and then I'm gonna go select a color. I already have it saved down here. I'm gonna select that green. So now whenever I send anything out of this screen, it's gonna have this screen color behind it. So if I'm sending graphics, those lower thirds, it's gonna have that green behind it where there's nothing. If I do have a full JPEG over top in my screen, obviously that full JPEG will go out, that full media item will go out, but with just the lower thirds, now it'll send out that green behind and I can key that out. So that's my setup within the screen configuration. So I have my test one set up to go to the left side of the dual head and my test two set out to go to the right side of the dual head. And I also have these other screens set up to go to a placeholder currently, but that goes out one output and this one goes out another output. So once I have that set up, we're gonna go one more place. We're gonna click on screens again, and we're gonna go edit our looks again. So let's go to my message lower thirds look that I have selected. And you can see that my main output is set up this way. It's got all of these things turned on. Like I've said, I don't use the props or announcements feature, so that's not a big deal. Um, and we have our slide and our media, and I could turn off video input on all of these because I don't use any video inputs either into ProPresenter. My live stream output, I have all of these things turned off. I don't use the mask either, but my live stream output, I have the props and announcement slides turned off just for sake of doing it, even though I don't use them. And then I also have media turned off so that when I'm choosing a slide in a graphic, if I have a background behind it, that media is turned off. So my, my moving backgrounds that go behind my worship lyrics automatically get turned off and will not show on my live stream output and that's where then that green comes in behind. And then I have my slides selected so it gets the proper text and the proper uh, words coming on the screen. But then I have my presentation. This is the important piece here. I have my presentation for my message lower thirds set to my lower third theme that we created in the last video. So this one comes in and selects this theme and will push that theme out of this output. So let's do that again on our test that we just created. Since we just created those screens, those now show up as options in our looks that we're gonna push out. So let's do the same thing. Let's say we want our test one here to go out the exact same way that my main screens do. I would just leave this alone. But I want my test two to look just like my live stream. So we're gonna turn these off and we're gonna turn off media and we're gonna select our presentation, come into the message lower third and then select lower third. And now this one would look just like my live stream output if I needed to send it out some other way. You can set up as many screens as your computer would be able to push out. So if I had a triple head to go, then I could set that up at three HD wide screens and then chop that in and put it a three to one and now select my different pieces. And I would have test one, test two, and test three that I could set up to look however I wanted to. So let's go into the nameplate here. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna turn off the media so it doesn't show. And I'm gonna select my, select my presentation and come down to nameplate and I'm gonna select my nameplate template. And you can see that's the same one that I have selected here for my live stream output. That's the final important piece that then once you have created your screens like we just went through, now you have to go set up your screens to send out the proper look to head out to where you need them to go. Once you've done that, you're pretty well set. And the last thing that you need to do is you need to go to each one of your slides. And we talked about this a little bit. So I want this slide with my nameplate to send out a particular audience look. So I right click on it and because it's already there, I'd have to edit the look. But you can see that I have nameplate selected to go out. Let's go to a song that we haven't done yet. We're gonna be doing, uh, for Valentine's, we're gonna be singing Speechless by Dan and Shay, so I just put this one in here. So let me right click on this slide and I'll go to Add Action, Audience Look, and we're gonna give this 
the worship theme. And I click on this slide. So my main output looks just like that. And my live stream output looks like that. This slide, I don't have an audience look on yet. Once again, let's talk about the little mustache man. There's no audience look on this. So if I come back and I click on this slide now that doesn't have a look on it, it still looks the same because it's remembering what the last look was that was used. Let's add an audience look to our front screen here and let's call, we're gonna go and we're gonna put, we're gonna put the nameplate on this. And that'll screw things up a little bit, won't it? So if I click on this slide, the nameplate pops up. It's got no information to put on it, but there's the nameplate graphic, the template that I used. And now if I click on this slide, that's the most recent look that was used. So it's now sticking random text in wherever it can to try to make sense of things. So obviously that's not how we would want that to look. So if I click on that slide and now I move forward, it's now recognizing the most recently used look and pushing that out. That's exactly why I go in and I select all of the slides that I want to look this way and I go ahead and I make them all have the correct action audience look on them. And so we're gonna select worship. So I just selected all of those slides and selected them to worship. So that way I can be assured that when I click on this slide, it's gonna have the correct imagery going out to the right places. So now let's click on that first one again, which I jacked up and put nameplate on. But now if I go to any one of these slides, it automatically switches to the right look. And I can be assured that all of these have the correct thing on them and I'm not gonna have if my CG person doesn't click on the first slide or doesn't click on the right thing, that would all of a sudden it would send things out the wrong way if I didn't have this audience look set on every one of these slides. So just for sake of me not forgetting to fix this for later, I'm gonna edit my actions, come to audience look, and currently I call this one uh, just message, which sends out just blank right now. Just blank, just like that. So that's how you do that. And obviously I haven't set up my worship template or any of those for the test two, like we were setting up before. I need to go through each one of those in my screens, in my edit looks. I would need to go through each one of these that I use and set them up for each screen, how I need them to look. Because default comes in with everything selected just like this so that it just sends out whatever pro presenter is seeing in its main window. So I need to go set up each one of these to send out the correct template to these various places. But once you've done that, everything's gonna go where you need it to be. But you can understand now why I say it's a little nitpicky. If you don't put the right look on the right thing, or if you happen to skip a slide, if you everything was starting with this one and you happen to skip that slide, now your other stuff isn't gonna look right. It's gonna be pulling from another option. So that's where I'm saying you need to be really meticulous with how you set that up, but that's how you do that. You create your templates, like we talked about in the last video. Then once your templates are created, you create the different screens for where things are going to go out. Whatever number of screens you need, create those screens, and then come back in and you're gonna edit your looks so that you can select your templates and where things are going based on those screens. I hope that was helpful to you. I hope that provided some information on how to do this well. So do all the things that YouTube tells you to do, like, subscribe, hit that bell notification so you know when I drop another video. I'm not trying to grow a YouTube channel. I'm just trying to help as many people as I can with the information that I have learned along the way. So I hope this helped you and we'll see you guys next time.